Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, and welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to WWDC 2015. Although we may not have any, thank you, <laughs> high-flying trapeze acts, we do have a lot of great things to talk about this morning. This developer conference continues to be the epicenter of change for not only Apple, but the industry. This is our 26th WWDC. We have ten attendees today from over 70 countries, and 80% are here for the very first time. <laughs> this is our most global conference ever. And a special shout out to th our 350 scholarship winners. These guys are unbelievable. I spent some time with them yesterday. Our youngest scholarship winner is a 12-year-old girl from New York. She is going to have a fantastic future ahead. We've got over 100 sessions planned for you and over 150 labs so that you can get your hands on our latest technologies. And we've got over 1,000 Apple engineers to answer just about any question that you might have. Now, we had a lot more people that would have liked to have been here this morning, but unfortunately, we just can't fit any more in, as you can tell. And so for the first time, we're not only live streaming the keynote, but we're live streaming 30 sessions of the conference as well. Now, before we get right to the show, I'd like to bring up something that I saw on the news just a few days ago. This is Brandon Moss of the Cleveland Indians, and he hit his 100th career home run last Tuesday. Obviously, it's a huge milestone if you're a baseball player. Not a lot of people do this. And you can imagine how much that ball would mean to him to have it. But it turns out the ball was hit into the Indians' bullpen, and his teammates decided to play a bit of a prank on him. They decide to hold it for ransom. And this is the list of things they ask for. <laughs> Apple Watches, iPads, MacBook Airs, iPhones. It's unbelievable. It's a shopping list for the Apple Store. Now, Brandon would have had to raid an Apple Store to get that ball back. That didn't seem quite right to us. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pay the ransom. And I have the ball right here. <laughs> we're giving the ball to, Branson, to Brandon, and we're going to give everything his teammates asked for to them so everybody's happy. So congratulations, Brandon, on 100 home runs, and good luck on the next 100. Now, we've got a jam-packed morning for you. We're going to get started with OS X. We're bringing a whole bunch of new great capabilities to the Macintosh. And next, we've got a great update for iOS, the world's most advanced mobile operating system. And today, we're bringing native apps to the watch with a new version with a new version of the watch OS which gives the developers even more time to create even greater apps for the watch that will change the world now all three of these ecosystems together provide incredible opportunities for developers and unbelievable possibilities for users. So we're very excited about this. There's a lot here, and so I'm going to dispense with my normal updates other than to tell you everything's going great. <laughs> and I'd like to bring out my friend and colleague, 
Craig Federighi to take you through OS 10 and iOS. Craig. Good morning. Wow. Hey. Fantastic to be with you here at WWDC. The team has been doing some amazing work this year, and I'm thrilled to be able to share it with you today. We're going to start with OS 10. Now, our current release, Yosemite, is a big, bold, beautiful release with a gorgeous new UI and breakthrough features like continuity that let you work across your devices like never before. Now, the adoption rate for Yosemite is just incredible. In fact, over 55% of active Mac users are running our latest update, and this is just unprecedented in the history of our industry. <laughs> in fact, Yosemite has the fastest adoption rate for any PC operating system ever, so thank you. So for our next big release of OS X, we knew we wanted to build on those strengths of Yosemite with some really great refinements and advances. The only really real question, of course, was what to call it. So we had to once again turn to our crack Apple marketing team. <laughs> now, in typical California fashion, they started with the project kickoff meeting <laughs> and then headed immediately into a team building offsite. <laughs> Now, of course, they're in their traditional Apple marketing free bottom Fridays attire. They, they say it's all part of their process. Uh, I'm not sure I get it. Ultimately, this didn't yield any, any uh, names, so they called in a consultant. He told them the answer was to be found within. Not within themselves, but within Yosemite. And so the new name for OS X is OS X El Capitan. For El Capitan, we focused in two major areas, experience and performance. For experience, we've made Spotlight more expressive, more powerful, and more knowledgeable than ever. We've made big enhancements to the apps you use most and we've made some real great advance advancements in the area of how you manage Windows on the system. But rather than just talk about it, I'd like to show it to you. So let's start with a demo right now. Now your first task, of course, in a demonstration or whenever you wake your Mac, is finding the cursor. And El Capitan makes this easier than ever. I just do that little shake we all normally do. And there it is, it comes right out to greet you. It's really handy. Now, we brought other great gestures to the system. I'm just going to go here and mail. I have a message here from Eddie. Uh, looks like, well, now, <laughs> that's a keeper. So I can actually mark it uh, unread to keep it just by swiping two fingers across the trackpad, just like that. And this one, I kind of like to delete. So I'm just going to swipe it away just like that. So some real nice little gestures. Let's move on now to Safari. Now in Safari, I have some sites that I like to keep around because I refer to them on and off throughout the day. And now, in Safari, I can pin those sites just like this. So there's, I'm gonna pin my Twitter site here. And of course, I've been following the Warriors. Go Warriors, we're gonna get it done. <laughs> just like that. Now, pin sites have a lot of special properties. For one, if I close this window and reopen it, you see that my pin sites are all right there and they load instantly. Now, pin sites also behave differently when I follow links. So I'm just gonna click on one here, and you notice it opens in a new tab, but my pin site remains. Now I'm gonna open up a couple of more links. Let's open up this one, and let's say this one. I'll take a quick look. This one looks like some kind of presentation video, and this one's about the giants. But have you ever had this happen to you? You're like, where is this audio coming from? Well now, with just a tap, you can mute it, or find out where it came from, and shut it down, just like that. So uh, I'm interested in seeing this, uh, this Giants game, and now Spotlight can actually help me out there. So I'm just going to do a search for the SF Giants, 
And we see right now I get uh, current game scores, upcoming games. Uh, looks like the game I want to go to is on Friday, so I can just search for weather on Friday. See, we get the weather and uh, can even resize the spotlight panel and move it around. I mean, there's innovation, huh? <laughs> so, but I can also express myself in my own words in spotlight searches now. So I can do things like slides from Brian. You see, I find those there, but how about slides from Brian about El Capitan? You see, I find exactly what I'm looking for in my own words. Now, this works great in other apps as well. Let's try it out in mail. So I've been really busy, of course, the last couple of days, and so I've been getting a little behind on my mail. And I want to see the messages that uh, I've received from Phil, but that I haven't responded to yet. So I'm just going to say, uh, mail I ignored from Phil. <laughs> there, there are a few, but I'll, I'll be getting back to them uh, right after the show. <laughs> so next, of course, it's great in the Finder as well. So if I wanted to look at documents that I was uh, working on uh, last year at this time, I might say something like, uh, documents I worked on last June. And I find exactly what I'm looking for. So this is really a great way to search. Now next I want to turn to window management. So I'm just going to run a script here that's going to open up a whole bunch of windows to simulate kind of what my desktop looks like after a day working on OS X, because it's a powerful system. And we tend to have a lot of things open. Now OS X provides some great ways to navigate your windows, and one of those is mission control. Well now, in El Capitan, we've made mission control smoother, simpler, and faster than ever. I'm just gonna take three fingers and swipe up on the trackpad. You see I get into this gorgeous overview of mission control. I'll just bring forward Safari. Let's do that again and bring up mail. Just like that, works really great. But of course, OS X provides great tools also to organize your windows, and one of those is full screen. I'm just gonna take this window here, full screen. And I'm going to reply. Looks like there's a uh, message here from Eddie. He says that he, uh, sorry about bailing on the team dinner last night. He was uh, apparently prepping for the keynote. So that's, that's understandable. But it looks like actually I just got a new uh, mail from uh, Jeff here. And now I can just click away. And it hides. And then, oh, hold on. <laughs> Busted, Eddie. So I think I'll just drag this actually right into my compose window. It hops right up automatically and I can do it just like that. It's really great. And I can even open up tabs in compose as well. It's really handy. So this is a great way now to work in full screen in mail. Thank you. Now we've done something totally new to El Capitan and it's the ability to work really easily on two windows side by side. So I'm just gonna click and hold here on the green button, and you see it's prompting me to pick a side. I'll just drop it in, and you notice I get an expose of all my other windows. Let me pick the new news app, just like that. Of course, I can resize this window to style it just the way I want. How about that blur? Again, innovation. So, great way to work. Uh, here I can drag links, for instance, from Safari right in here. And you notice in the new Notes app, I get a beautiful graphical link that gives me a nice thumbnail that helps me identify uh, what, I, what I dragged in there. I'm going to drag in uh, some yurts. I think yurts, first time mentioned on the w WDC keynote stage. So there you go. We've got some yurts here. So great way to work split screen. But we've also provided a really easy way to move windows into their own desktops. So let me just take this window here. I'm just going to drag it up past the top of the screen and drop it in just like that. So easy. But I can also do this to take a window full screen. So let's take photos. Just drop it in right here. I took it full screen. And now check this out. I'm going to take messages, drop it on photos, and create a split view just like that. Totally awesome. And that is a quick look at some improvements to the experience in El Capitan. So we saw in El Capitan a powerful form of search and spotlight that lets you compose your searches in your own words. It knows more than ever. It can look up weather, stocks, game scores. We saw gestures, for instance, just swiping to delete in mail. 
and of course pin sites in Safari, and the ability to easily mute tabs. A great new notes app that supports text styling, checklists, and graphical links, and better window management than ever with a beautiful new mission control interface, easy access to your spaces bar, and of course the ability to do split view and adjust it to see exactly what you're looking for, every pixel of your display devoted to your content. Of course, there's much more to experience in El Capitan, but now I want to turn to performance. So we've optimized performance throughout the system. In fact, we're seeing about a 1.4 times acceleration in app launching, a 2x improvement in the snappiness of switching apps, the time to get first mail messages twice as fast, and opening a PDF in preview four times as fast. But we've also made deep architectural improvements, and that brings us to metal. <laughs> Last year, yeah, thank you, we introduced metal at WWDC as a way to accelerate graphics in high performance games. It takes the overhead out of OpenGL, providing a high performance API that gives the game direct access to the power of the underlying graphics hardware. Well, this year, we're bringing metal to the Mac. And we're doing more than that, because we're taking the graphics stacks on which apps on OS X are built, core animation and core graphics, and moving them from OpenGL to run natively on top of metal, making everything you do faster. We're seeing 50% improvements in rendering performance and a 40% reduction in the amount of CPU necessary to do graphics. That means improved performance for your applications and better battery life. But the benefits of Metal don't stop there. Metal's also great for high performance apps. In fact, Metal combines the compute power of OpenCL and the graphics power of OpenGL in a higher performance API that does both. And what we've seen from working with early pro developers is really phenomenal. Adobe came in and in short order was able to deliver an eight times improvement in their rendering effects inside of After Effects. And they've been able to take the drawing engine in Illustrator, move it on top of Metal, and take kinds of UI that previously was non-interactive, like Zoom of extremely detailed drawings, and make it completely flawless and interactive, thanks to Metal. Adobe's so pleased with this, they've said they're committed to adopting Metal on their OS X apps, seeing performance increases up to 8x. They're excited and what it can do for their Creative Cloud users. Well, of course, Metal is also fantastic for games with a 10x improvement, that's 10 times, improvement in, in drawing performance. And so we brought in Epic to see what they could do in short order, and the results are really phenomenal. I'd like to welcome to the stage Josh Adams and Billy Bramer for a quick demo. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much for having us here today. So last year, Metal revolutionized graphics on iOS. And now, Apple's amazed us again by bringing Metal to the Mac. Of course, this is great news for games, but also for the tools that we use to make those games. Here, you're seeing Epic's upcoming multiplayer title, Fortnite, running entirely on Metal. We're modifying it directly within the Unreal Engine, a development tool that powers many of today's best games. Quite a bit going on in the scene, though, so let's break it down. First, there are 64 different layers of rendering effects, and that's a lot. They're all combining together, though, to produce what you see on the, ce on the scene today. If we go into a simple wireframe mode, you can see the thousands of building blocks that make up this world. We can start to add in layers, flat shading, detailed lighting, runtime shadows, and finally, we combine them all together to bring Fortnite's fun and lighthearted aesthetic to life. The interesting thing here, though, is that all of the effects you're seeing are being done completely in real time. Notice how the shadows and objects interact nicely as Josh moves the car around. Finally, we can change the time of day on the fly, dramatically altering the mood of the entire scene. All of this is thanks to the efficiency of metal. In fact, we're seeing a 70% reduction in CPU use compared to OpenGL, enabling developers like us to create richer 3D worlds. Now, speaking of those worlds, let's hop into the game, Fortnite. Now, if you've ever built a pillow fort and battled imaginary monsters with your friends, 
you already know how to play Fortnite. This is the end of the world scenario you've been training for since you were a kid. This beautifully stylized universe, you can destroy anything you want. Gather resources and build a fort. So let's go ahead and wreck this car. Gather its metal and continue our wanton destruction by chopping down this tree, get some wood for later. Oh, did we mention there are purple death storms? Uh, like this one, for instance. We should go. Now, luckily, while we were out exploring, we found a multitude of weapons. And this broom. If we can just get across the field, our friend's been busy building a fort for us to hole up in. Oh, did we mention the storms are made of monsters? We're gonna need something a bit better than this broom. Nice! And there's our friend laying down some covering fire. Call that move the power cord. I got a bad feeling about this. You're gonna need a bigger fort. Let's place a trap, head inside. That looks like an enemy's broken into our fort. All right, let's use that wood we gathered earlier and fix this wall, build some stairs, meet up with our friend Topside. Glad you could make it. Whether you're a gamer or a game developer, Metal opens new possibilities for rich and engaging worlds. You can download the Unreal Engine for Mac right now, and the Fortnite beta for Mac starts this fall. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. That was great. We've been totally impressed with what Epic has been able to accomplish in such a short time. And this is in part because the work they did to adopt Metal in their rendering engines for iOS immediately pays dividends on OS X. And we're seeing this with many other developers as well who are bringing their gaming engines immediately to the Mac. And pro app makers are seeing the benefits of Metal as well. People like the Foundry and Autodesk. I think we're gonna see pro users, gamers, and all of us benefiting from the performance advantages of Metal. So that is El Capitan. Improvements to experience, and performance. Now, El Capitan is available to all of you developers today. We'll be doing a public beta once again in July, and we'll be rolling out to everyone with a free upgrade this fall. And that's our update on OS X. Next, you guessed it, iOS. Now our current big release of iOS is iOS 8. And iOS 8 was a huge release with tons of new features for users and a phenomenal set of technologies that you developers have been able to use to deliver all new experiences to the platform. The upgrade rate for iOS has been fantastic. We have 83% of active iPhone users currently running the latest OS. And this is really important because it means not only are they getting the most recent features, but they're also up to date on all the security uh, fixes, and you're able to know as a developer that you can target all the users with the latest and greatest APIs. And this is a benefit that actually remains really unique to iOS. Well, so as we look forward... So we're now looking forward to iOS 9, and as we conceived, of what we wanted to accomplish. First and foremost, we wanted to elevate the foundations of the platform. Things like extending your battery life, improving performance, and enhancing the security to protect customer data. But there was more we wanted to do. Adding intelligence throughout the user experience in the way that enhances how you use your device, but without compromising your privacy. Things like improving the apps that you use most and taking the experience to the I of the iPad to the next level. I want to start today with intelligence and Siri. Now, Siri has quietly become incredibly popular. It serves over a billion requests per week. And this is in part because Siri has gotten so great at understanding what we're saying. In just the last year, it's seen a 40% reduction 
in uh, word error rate down to 5%. That's an industry leading number. And Siri's 40% faster than ever at responding to what we say. Now for iOS 9, Siri has a beautiful new UI and is capable of doing so much more. Things like show me photos from Utah last August can instantly show you the right photos from your photo library. And Siri's really great at taking reminders. Now you can ask Siri things like, remind me to grab my coffee off the roof of my car when I get in, because Siri knows now when you've gotten in the car. And of course, we often want to take reminders about things that we're looking at on our device, some content inside of an app, maybe a Safari. And so now you can say things like, remind me about this when I get home, and that reminder refers right back to the link to specifically what you were looking at when you took that reminder. So Siri is a great assistant, but the best assistants are proactive. And so in iOS 9, we're bringing proactivity throughout the system. So say you like to run in the morning, and when you do, you like to listen to music. Well now, your phone can learn that about you, and when you plug in your headphones, it can offer up now playing automatically right on the lock screen. Yeah. And this is all context sensitive to the time, the place, and even the devices you're connected to. So you do the same thing in the car later on, and it might offer up the, e the uh, audio book that you've been listening to. Now as a great assistant, your iPhone can now take invitations that you receive in your email, and without you even touching them, automatically put them on your calendar, and even give you a time to leave reminder, taking into account current traffic conditions, and of course, with just a swipe, give you access to driving directions. Now, have you ever had this happen to you? You get a call, and the number looks kind of familiar, but you're really not sure who it is? Well, as a great assistant, your phone can now look in your email and find out who that person might be and suggest it to you right on the incoming call screen. It's super handy. Now, this kind of proactivity is also great when it comes to search. So now when you swipe to the left of the home screen to get to search, you see that Siri offers, offers great suggestions. Things like the people that you might want to contact now based on your upcoming meetings and your communication patterns, the apps that you might want to launch based, for instance, on what you just downloaded from the App Store and haven't yet tried out, or apps that you tend to use this time of day. And also, easy one-tap links to locations that are relevant nearby and even breaking news. And when it comes to search, we also know more than ever before. So for instance, you can search for sports scores. And we now support video search of popular video sites like Vivo, Vimeo, YouTube, and the iTunes Store, and have these great descriptive cards with a play button so you can play directly from your search result. But most importantly, we now have an API for search. So now when a user performs a search, we can find content behind the apps they have installed on the device and pull those up in results. And when they tap, they're deep linked directly into the application. You see, for instance, here Airbnb, where they can get their result. And of course, we even provide a convenient backlink so they can get right back to their search results. So we think these kinds of intelligence features really make a huge difference in your experience in iOS. And to show you how, I'd like to give you a quick demo now. So I want to take you through a day in the life with iOS 9. And we're going to start with uh, a typical day for me uh, today. And uh, we're going to start in my bedroom when, when I woke up in the morning. And you'll notice, because my phone knows that in the morning uh, I like to meditate, that it's offered me a meditation app right here in the bottom left of the screen. So I can just swipe up from the bottom left, and I'm taken right in to meditate. Ah, uh, this is so serene. Oh, well, it looks like I got an email, a, a, a message here from Phil. Um, so Phil says that he's putting together the invite for tonight's big karaoke potluck, and can I still pick up this super awesome karaoke machine? Well, you know, 
Siri actually, when I take reminders, is able to link me right back to what I'm looking for. So if I want to remember to pick this up, I can just say this to Siri. Remind me about this later today. And so Siri will put together a reminder, okay, and you see the you. link right back to what I'm looking for. Well, I think after all, meditation isn't probably for me, so maybe I'll move on to exercise. So I'll head into the uh, home gym here, and because my phone knows that when I'm in the home gym and I hook up headphones that I like to listen to music, watch what happens when I plug in the cord, my headphones. Jumps right in and offers me some energetic music. So let's all uh, bust a move. Bust. I don't know what kind of exercise we're all doing here, but uh, pretty good. Oh, looks like actually I've got that invitation that Phil was gonna send me. So now normally I'd have to actually go into mail, look at the time, put this on my calendar, but in fact my phone has automatically done that for me. Let me just swipe down here into Notification Center and we'll look at the, my calendar for the day. And you notice that automatically it's already been added right there. Now, if we look at the rest of my day, up ahead, I have uh, my vocal warm-ups, of course, for the karaoke performance, and then, uh, and then WWDC. So, it uh, looks like I have a little bit of time to prepare my uh, dish for the big potluck. So, I'm going to head into the kitchen now, and let's just swipe in. Now, when I'm looking for recipes, for instance, I like to go into search. So, let's just swipe over into search, and we see that Siri actually is already, before I've typed a character, made suggestions for me for people I could contact, for instance, like Trent Reznor, my uh, vocal coach. So I can just <laughs> tap, and here I can call Trent up, and he can help me tap into my inner pain and rage that allows me to fuel my vocal performances. <laughs> I actually haven't been able to find the pain and rage, to tell the truth be told. But uh, also, we have all these great apps I can run, and locations uh, nearby, for instance, because it's morning, you see coffee and tea and breakfast places are suggested, as well as news. But in this case, I actually want to do a search. So I have some potatoes I think I could make use of in this recipe. So let's just search for potato. And here you notice I'm getting search results right from Yumly. So let me tap into Yumly, and you see I'm deep linked directly in, so I get the great view provided by that application. Now, potato chips aren't exactly what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to hit the backlink here. And I can just browse directly in to another result, Canadian poutine. Now, that looks like exactly what the doctor ordered. Yes. So let's take a look at the ingredients. Looks like six tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm down with that. So I'm going to make a, um, at least a double batch. So I can just use search to actually search for, uh, to do a conversion of tablespoons, figure out how much that is. So that actually is three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to round up to an even quart and uh, make myself <laughs> some fine poutine. So. Search is really handy, but Siri is also great at search. So I want to jump forward to later today, when I think I'll be reminiscing about WWDC's past, and I can ask Siri to help me with that. Show my photos from last June in San Francisco. Oh yeah, this is great. All these photos from WWDC, and you notice now photos in iOS 9 has this great scrubber bar down at the bottom. So I can easily slide through photos super quickly, just like this. Let's see, oh boy, now we're into the karaoke night. Oh, this is some, this is some fine stuff. Phil really does an awesome Viking crooner. This is good stuff. But of course, the king of karaoke, Eddie Q. In fact, when I want to get really pumped up and inspired for karaoke night, I like to turn to my Eddie karaoke album. So let's do that now. Show my karaoke photos of Eddie. Oh, that is the master at work. Hitting all, I love this hat. Uh, <laughs> this is it, totally dope. Um, great stuff. Well, I could really look at these just all day, but you know, actually my assistant has given me a r reminder based on traffic conditions that it's time to leave. So I'm gonna wrap up this demo of intelligence in iOS 9. So you've seen how we've been able to bring intelligence throughout the experience in iOS 9, but we do it in a way that does not compromise your privacy. We don't mine your email, your photos, or your contacts in the cloud to learn things about you. We honestly just don't want to know. 
We, all of this is done on device, and it stays on device, under your control. And if we do have to perform a lookup on your behalf, for instance, for current traffic conditions, it's anonymous. It's not associated with your Apple ID. It's not linked to other Apple services. And it's not shared with third parties. Why would you do that? You are in control. That is intelligence in iOS 9. Next, let's turn to Apple Pay. And to take you through it, I'd like to bring to the stage our vice president of our Apple Pay business, Jennifer Bailey. Jennifer. Thanks, Craig. It's great to be here. We have been hard at work on our goal of replacing the wallet, and we've got some exciting updates for you today. I hope you've all tried Apple Pay with our super easy, secure, and private way to pay. Last year, we started with credit and debit cards, and we now have over 2,500 banks supporting Apple Pay. And this fall, Discover will bring Apple Pay to the more than 50 million card members. <laughs> Popular merchants are also accept uh, expanding their acceptance for Apple Pay, including great retailers who will be supporting Apple Pay this year, including Trader Joe's, Baskin Robbins, and J.C. Penney's. These incredible brands join a great list of the biggest and best merchants supporting Apple Pay since our launch in October. And for you basketball fans, if you're lucky enough to have finals tickets, you'll be able to pay for all your team logo wear at both arenas using Apple Pay. <laughs> Small businesses are also important for us. So we're working with innovative companies like Square to enable millions of small businesses to accept Apple Pay. This fall, Square, Square will launch a gorgeous new reader. Pre-orders are starting today on Square.com, and these will be available in our Apple retail stores starting this fall. With fantastic support of merchants, both large and small, we will surpass one million locations accepting Apple Pay next month. And thanks to our amazing developers, we have great momentum within apps as well. Apple Pay is so easy to use in-app. Our developers are telling us they're seeing more than two times increase in checkout rates. And we're adding new apps with Apple Pay to the App Store every day. Here are some of the latest, representing a great range of categories, from Delta in travel to Etsy, the leading crafts marketplace. These apps join an incredible group that are redefining new and simpler ways to pay. We're also excited to be working with Pinterest. Later this month, Pinterest will launch Bible Pins, where you'll be able to buy items from thousands of stores, including Neiman Marcus and Macy's, right from within the Pinterest app, using Apple Pay, and only on iOS. With the great momentum of Apple Pay in the US, we are now excited to announce that we're bringing Apple Pay to the UK. And it's coming next month. We will, we will launch with eight of the most popular banks, with more coming this fall. With this great lineup of banks, we will support more than 70% of the credit and debit cards in the UK. Great merchants are also lining up to support Apple Pay, like Boots, Costa Coffee, and iconic British brands like Marks and & Spencer and Waitrose. We will have over 250,000 locations supporting Apple Pay in the UK. That's more than we started with in the US at our initial launch. We are also thrilled that our customers will be able to commute and pay for their fares on the London transportation system with Apple Pay. So that's Apple Pay coming to the UK. Now let's talk about some of the new features that we're adding in iOS 9. 
First, you'll be able to add your store, credit, and debit cards. Store cards offer unique membership benefits, and leading retailers like Kohl's, JCPenney, and BJ's will be the first to offer their cards on Apple Pay. We will also add loyalty and rewards cards, also with a great lineup of merchants. Kohl's will bring Yes to You program, Walgreens their Balance Rewards card, and for you coffee and donut lovers, Dunkin' Donuts will bring Apple Pay to DD Perks to their stores beginning this fall. And Apple Pay automatically presents the right uh, card so you'll never miss a reward. With the expansion of Apple Pay and the new types of cards, we've decided it's time to rename Passbook to Wallet. <laughs> One place for all your credit and debit cards, loyalty cards, boarding passes, and more. We told you last year that our ultimate goal was to replace the wallet, and we are well on our way to doing just that. We couldn't be happier with the progress towards our vision and with the momentum of Apple Pay. Thank you. So that's Apple Pay. Let's turn now to our enhancements to the apps you use most. And we're going to start with Notes. Notes is used regularly by about half of our users on iPhone. And for iOS 9, we have some really great enhancements. It starts with how you work with simple text. So now, Notes provides a really handy toolbar with formatting options. So it's easy, for instance, to create titles, heading styles, numbered lists. But of course, we all like to create checklists in our notes. And so Notes makes that really easy. And of course, you can just check off your items with just a tap. Now, because a picture is worth a 1,000 words, we make it easy to get at your camera and your camera roll and put photos directly in your notes. We're also providing a great new way to capture your ideas by just drawing with your finger. We provide some great drawing tools. You can make sketches with these tools and drop them right inside your notes. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but a lot of times the things I want to put on my notes are things that I'm looking at that I find in other apps, for instance, a web page in Safari. So now, from the share sheet, you can just, with a tap, add a link right back into your notes. And we make it really easy to find your notes. So we organize them by time, of course, and now we have these great thumbnails that let you see your embedded images at a glance. But we also provide this cool new attachments view that shows you all of your photos, your maps links, your website links. And when you tap, you can get right back to the note where they came from. Now, Notes is great on iPhone, on iPad, and of course, on the Mac as well. And all of your content is kept up to date across all of your devices via iCloud. That's a quick update to Notes. <laughs> Next, let's turn to Maps. We've continued to invest heavily in Maps, and the improvements are really awesome. We're seeing 5 billion user requests per week. Usage on iOS is 3.5 times higher than for the next leading mapping app. Now, Maps, of course, historically, have been focused on drivers. They emphasize things like freeways and roads. But we know for a lot of our iOS users, they're, fundam they're mostly focused on public transit. And so now we've created a great map just for them. Yes, it's transit. With transit, we provide a map that emphasizes all of the different transit lines, buses and trains, subway stations, and so forth. And when you tap on a station, you get to see all the lines that run through it with their departure times. And we do multimodal routing, using the, whether you're taking a train, a subway, a bus, or a ferry. And we provide step-by-step -step directions, including time for walking directions. But we've taken special care to get the details right, the ones that matter with transit. For instance, if you take a subway station, like this one in Columbus Circle in New York, it's not just a point on a map. 
If you look closer, it's actually an enormous underground structure spanning many city blocks. And so we carefully surveyed all of the entrances and exits so that we could give you walking directions based on the time to travel from where you actually are. Now this not only saves you a ton of walking, but it also probably is the difference between catching your train on time and being stuck. It's really great. Now we've taught Siri all about transit, so it's effortless to ask Siri for directions. And we're gonna be rolling maps out transit, starting with these cities across the world, and with these and 300 more in China. Now when it comes to searching in maps, we're now letting you find locations by type nearby with just a tap. And when you find a location you're interested in, the card will tell you right away, right there in the bottom, whether they support Apple Pay. Support those Apple Pay merchants. <laughs> Maps is great on iPhone and iPad, and of course, the Mac as well. And that is Maps. The apps that we've chosen to build in to iOS are there because they represent fundamental experiences to living on a mobile device. And there's been one that we've been wanting to do for years, something that so many of us find ourselves wanting to do every day on our device. And so today, I'm pleased to announce that we're introducing a new application, and it's called News. News is beautiful content from the world's greatest sources personalized for you. Now, here's an article in news. It's absolutely stunning. Now, publishers can easily create beautiful content using gorgeous imagery, custom layout, and rich typography. But news is also interactive. And so to give you a look at news in action, I'd like to invite to the stage our Vice President of Application, Product Management, Susan Prescott. Susan. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. I am really excited to be the first person to show you our new news app. It's right here on the home screen. The first thing news wants to do is get a sense of what I like. So it's going to give me a short list of really great choices to choose from. And you'll see as I tap, additional recommendations come in on the bottom to give you even more choices. So I read Atlantic, Wired, New York Times, and ESPN. I'm still with you, warriors. And Daring Fireball, topics too, like science, baking, and travel. I could keep going, but I think that's a great start. So I'll tap done. News creates a personalized feed called for you. It's based on the choices I just made, and it's all my news in one place. You can see it looks great. It's easy to scan, and it updates every time I check news. The articles can come from anywhere, but the best ones are built in our new Apple News format. Like this Wired article featuring Rashida Jones, awesome in Parks and Rec and The Office. Look at the rich typography beautiful images, and my favorite part are the really fun animations. It's fast and fluid. We think this offers the best mobile reading experience ever. To get to the next article, I just swipe. It's not just great for magazines, it's great for newspapers too. This is a New York Times article, and it looks like a New York Times article. Swipe down, there's a photo gallery right in line, fast, fluid to swipe through. Go to the next article. This one's from Quartz, but I'm seeing it because I said I'm interested in science. It's a pretty cool article about a font based on Albert Einstein's handwriting. The animation makes it come to life, and frankly, who knew he had such neat handwriting? It's kind of interesting. Swipe again, and I get an article from Bon Appetit. Great summer recipes, and a crazy little jiggly thing, which is kind of fun. So I'm a little busy right now, so 
I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this to read later. Next, ESPN. I love you, Steph. Uh, so. Now, I read ESPN for the articles, but there's also some beautiful photos and videos. Some photos and videos built in. Not so much last night. Let's see if Steph can make this Decent, one. Pretty good shooter when I was a kid. Swish! But All right. He's going to be time. there for us next game. In addition, data and stats are part of what's fun about sports, so of course, rich infographics can be part of it. I'm going to swipe back to for you. Now, news is smart, so the more I read, the better it gets at showing me stories I'm interested in. But what if I want to discover something new? Well, I can tap here in the bottom on Explore. And Explore, based on what I've read, will show me new publisher channels I might be interested in and suggested topics. Well, I love technology. I'm going to go ahead and follow that. But news keeps track of more than a million topics. So I can be much more specific about my interests. To do that, I can tap on Search and type. I'm going to type Swift. And I get a number of hits, everything from Taylor Swift to what I was looking for, Apple's new programming language. So it's a beautiful feed. And what's really cool about this is there are powerful machine learning algorithms that analyze the contents of the articles to figure out which stories belong in which article. This looks like just what I was hoping for. I'm going to go ahead and add Swift to my favorites. So let's take a look at favorites. I'll tap down here. Favorites is where I can see everything I'm following including Swift, which I just added. It's a great place to go if I want to dig into a particular topic or if I want to read a newspaper or a magazine. Let's say today I want to read Wired. You can tell I'm in the Wired channel. You see the Wired logo at the top and the Wired channel starting with top stories. I can swipe through and see a collection of all the print and web stories built in Apple News format, and it looks terrific. I'm going to look at one more story this is about the first civilian artist in space. Cool concept and really cool. Want to show you this. We've taken photo galleries to the next level with something we call photo mosaics. Look how beautiful it looks on the page. Stunning. And as you'd expect, I just tap to zoom in on the photos. It looks great. We think there's never been a more beautiful magazine reading experience, a mobile reading experience in general. And this is just one of many channels with beautiful stories built in Apple News format. That is a really quick look at news. We can't wait to get it in your hands. Thank you very much. So that's news, stunning content personalized for you, fantastic on iPad and on iPhone as well. And of course, unlike just about any other news aggregation service we're aware of on the planet, news is designed from the ground up with your privacy in mind. Now, we've worked with the leading publishers, like the New York Times, who'll be delivering 30 free articles daily to news users, and ESPN, who'll be bringing the depth and range of their phenomenal sports reporting. And Condé Nast, who are bringing content from 17 of their magazines, like Vanity Fair, Vogue, GQ, Wired, and Bon Appetit. And they'll be joined by many, many others, read by millions of users daily. But now, news isn't just for the media titans. Great content comes from all kinds of sources, and we want them all in news. So whether it's a local newspaper, a blog, or a special interest publication, they'll all be here. We'll be rolling out news starting in the United States, the UK, and Australia. We think you're really going to like it. <laughs> Next, let's turn to iPad. Now, iPad is a transformational device. For our users in education, business, and at home, 
for many of them, their iPad is their primary computer. And iPads are just tremendously powerful. And so in iOS 9, we're elevating the iPad experience to a whole new level. Now, it starts with something really simple, which is how you work with text. And that brings us to the quick type keyboard. Now, in iOS 8, we introduced the suggestion bar that makes it quicker than ever to type and enter what you're, you're trying to get in. But now, in iOS 9, we've added shortcuts to that bar. So with just a tap, you can cut, copy, paste, format your text, access your attachments. It's really handy. But you know what makes a multi-touch keyboard so special is that it can be anything you want. It can transform. And so now, when you want to move the cursor or make a selection, you can now just put two fingers down on the keyboard, and it becomes a trackpad instantly. You can move the cursor. You can make selections. Of course, you can use the shortcut bar to cut, drag to a new place, and paste editing more quickly than ever before and without your fingers ever leaving the home row. It's really great. And if you do occasionally want to hook a physical keyboard to your iPad as well, we've made that better than ever. We provide a way to discover all of the shortcuts that can accelerate your op operations and the applications using the keyboard. And we provided shortcuts for app switching. This might look familiar to some of you as well as to searching in Spotlight. So that's quick type. But now I want to turn to the big one, and that's multitasking. So iPad has always supported forms of multitasking, like this great graphical task switcher, and these nice four-finger gestures that let you move between applications. But for iOS 9, we're taking it to a whole new place and I'd like to show that to you now. So let's start here on my iPad. And what I'm going to do first is double tap on the home button, and you'll see our new task switcher. It's really gorgeous. Big, full screen previews of all the apps. Just move right into Safari like this. But of course, often when I'm in an app like Safari, I then I just want to quickly check my messages. So now, with just a single finger swipe from the side, I can slide it right in with what we call slide over. And of course, it's fully interactive right here. I can take a look, maybe type a response, put it right back. I'm back in Safari. Let me do that again. Now from the top, I can pull down and bring in other applications. So let's bring in Calendar. Of course, fully interactive, so I can tap into another day. Let's bring in another app. I'm going to bring in the new Notes app, just like that. Now, sometimes, of course, I want to stay working in Notes and Safari, both at the same time. So I can just tap here on the divider, and now I'm in split view. They're both completely active. In fact, for the first time ever, multi-app, multi-touch. I can move them both at the same time. Now, Notes is actually pinned to the side now, so I want to show you what happens when I switch apps. I'm just going to move over here to Photos, and you notice now I have Photos with Notes on the side. This is really great if I'm taking notes while working across a bunch of different experiences. And of course, those four-finger gestures continue to work great, so I can just swipe my way right back into Safari like that. I can follow links, of course, for my notes, so let me just tap on this link, and you see Safari loads it right here on the side. Now I can adjust this split, so let me just move that over to a nice 50-50 view with Notes and Safari. And I can tap on links to other apps. So let's uh, follow a link into Maps. See, Maps just, oh, I really want location accuracy. Thank you, very helpful. <laughs> so slides right in and shows me the location. I can follow another link, and you see Maps adjusts. I'm able to just stay focused right here in these two apps side by side. And let's say I want to now work on note, or Notes full screen. I can just pull right across like that, and I'm in full screen Notes. Now, this gives me a great opportunity to show you what's new with the QuickType keyboard. So I have a to-do list I'm building here. And I'm just going to buy, add an item here to buy a new uh, ice chest. There we go. But you know, on second thought, I think I, wanna, I should probably borrow one. So I'm just going to take two fingers down on the keyboard and just swipe over here. I can reposition the cursor like that, tap and make a selection, extend the selection, 
and type borrow. It's really easy. I can make bigger moves too. I go to the top here, maybe select the whole sentence, drag down, maybe do a checklist like this, and check them off. Just like that. Super cool. <laughs> Next, I want to show you multitasking in the context of something I think we all do uh, quite a bit on our iPads, which is not that, which is watching ESPN. So let's bring up a video. I'm going to play right here. Now, often when I'm watching a video, I may decide I want to look something up or check something or maybe even get a notification. And I want, to watch, want you to watch what happens when I tap. Watch the video. Now I have picture in picture. So I can still listen. I can watch my video. I can, of course, resize the pip if I want, like this. I can move it around the screen so it's out of the way of what I'm working on. I can even move it off the side. Sometimes I just want to listen for a while while I work. And of course, it stays with me wherever I go. I can pull it back. And then when I'm done, just tap to put it away. And that is multitasking in iOS 9. So iOS 9 delivers this great app switcher. And of course, that's available on iPhone as well. On iPad, we have slide over. So you can bring apps in from the side. You can tap and enter split view for simultaneous live two apps up. And of course, picture in picture. Now we provide developer APIs to let your apps work this way. And the good news is that you've already done most of that work. Because if you've adopted auto layout and size classes to work great on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, well, that carries over just like this onto iPad. Twitter came in and was able to do it just in minutes. It was really incredible. Now, slide over is available for the iPad Air, Air 2, Mini 2, and Mini 3, as is picture in picture. And our most powerful split view is available on our most powerful iPad the iPad Air 2. That's multitasking. So we've seen some great end user features, but of course we've also focused on the foundations. In performance, as you saw earlier on El Capitan with OS 10, we've taken the core frameworks that we use for drawing on the system, core animation and core graphics, and we put them on top of metal. We're seeing great acceleration, 1.6 times improvements in animations and scrolling, and a 50% reduction in CPU usage for drawing. It's really great. Now with battery life, we focused on real world use cases and optimized them. And we're seeing an addition of one hour of typical use on a full charge on iPhone. Now, we know that for a lot of you, if you're running low on power, you start searching all over for switches and turning off features in the hope of extending your battery life a little bit further. Well, now, in iOS 9, we give you a single switch to enter what we call low power mode. And it pulls levers that you didn't even know existed and is able to extend battery life for an additional three hours of typical use on top of that additional hour. It's really great. Now with security, we want to protect our users' data on device and in the cloud. And so we're bringing two-factor authentication and making it easy for everyone for, to protect their data in iCloud. And with software update, we want everyone to get to iOS 9. And so we've done major enhancements to the architecture for our over-the-air updates, and we've been able to reduce the amount of free space you need to get to iOS 9 from the 4.6 gigs that it took to get to iOS 8 down to just 1.3. So we think everyone's going to be getting to iOS 9. So iOS 9, intelligence throughout the system, Apple Pay, enhancements to really popular apps like Notes and uh, Maps, an all-new news app, and incredible features now for iPad with multitasking and quick type, and of course, enhancements to the foundations. 
Now, iOS 9 is a great release for our users, but once again, it's a fantastic release for all of you developers, bringing a ton of new features. You saw search extensibility. We're adding UI testing to Xcode. We have a new technology, yes. We have a new technology called app thinning, which optimizes your downloads to exactly the subset of resources needed for that user's device, so you're able to get, uh, take less space on device. It's really great. Now, when it comes to gaming, we've enhanced Sprite Kit, Scene Kit, and Metal, and introduced three new frameworks. Gameplay Kit, to bring artificial intelligence with path, uh, path avoid, optical, obstacle avoidance and pathfinding. Model I.O. to provide beautiful lighting on your 3D models. And Replay Kit. It lets you enhance your applications to let users record their gameplay as video and share it. It's really great. Now, Health Kit has been on fire. And so we've continued, well, we added water, actually, to Health Kit. We're not trying to put out the fire. Health Kit, we're adding lots of additional health metrics to be tracked. For instance, hydration, UV exposure, and reproductive health. Now, Home Kit has ta been taking off with manufacturers introducing Home Kit peripherals to the market now in areas like thermometers, locks, and lights. And now, in iOS 9, we're adding support for window shades, sensors of all kinds, for instance, carbon monoxide sensors, motion sensors, and we're adding support for security systems as well. But perhaps most importantly, we're allowing you to access your home remotely and securely via iCloud. So no matter where you are, you can control all of your HomeKit devices. Next, CarPlay. So CarPlay supports audio apps, and now in iOS 9, it also supports apps by the automaker to control things in your own car without leaving the CarPlay experience. And CarPlay supporting more kinds of screens, wider aspect ratios, high DPI, but most significantly with CarPlay, we're pulling the cord. In future cars, you'll be able to get in your car without taking your phone out of your bag or out of your pocket and start experiencing CarPlay effortlessly. It's gonna be really great. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about Swift. You all know that the growth that Swift has been experiencing is just unprecedented, and we've all seen it with the flood of applications coming into the App Store. Well, now we're stepping on the gas this year with Swift 2. Now, Swift was designed from the beginning to be fast, and we've continued to roll out targeted optimizations all year long. And now with Swift 2, we have an all new optimization technology that's especially great for complex applications and object-oriented programming that we call whole module optimization, and the results are really fantastic. In addition, we're bringing the language features that you've asked for most, an elegant new error handling model, the ability to see your interfaces as synthesized headers in Xcode, and the feature that Tim has been begging for all year protocol extensions. You're all going to love it. Now, we think Swift is the next big programming language, the one that we will all be doing application and systems programming on for 20 years to come. And we think Swift should be everywhere and used by everyone. And so we're going to be doing something really big. Today, we're announcing that Swift will be open source. We will be rolling out the compiler and the standard libraries for iOS, OS X, and Linux. And it'll all be out there by the end of the year. So that's Swift.
and that is iOS 9. We're doing a developer beta, you guessed it, today, and for the first time for a major iOS release, a public beta. So sign up now at beta.apple.com, and you can get the beta when it comes out in July. And of course, we'll be rolling it out as a free upgrade in the fall. And iOS 9 will support all of the devices that were supported by iOS 8. We're not dropping any this year because we want everyone to get iOS 9. That's iOS 9. I really appreciate your time. Have a fantastic conference. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. iOS just keeps getting better and better for many hundreds of millions of users. And iOS 9 takes it to an even greater level with incredible new apps and intelligence built right into iOS. And as an avid iPad user, I'm also incredibly excited about how far it extends the iPad experience as we continue to lead in the post-PC era. And with El Capitan, we've created a new version of OS X that dramatically improves the experience and the user experience and the performance of the Macintosh. And of course, Swift, if you've just heard, Swift provides a single language for you to create apps for both OS X and iOS. There's really so many possibilities for you to use these platforms and these tools to create unbelievable apps that will impact business and healthcare and education and really everything in our lives. There's seemingly no limit to what you can do. And of course, underpinning this, the App Store is very key. It's hard to believe that the App Store was launched only seven years ago. It's hard to remember a day without it. Now, I'm happy to announce that the App Store recently passed a major milestone. The App Store has passed 100 billion apps downloaded. The rate of growth and the momentum is absolutely staggering. The industry has never seen anything like this before. The App Store has forever changed software and software distribution. And it's also been an economic boon. We've now paid out $30 billion to developers. The App Store continues to be the most profitable app marketplace on the planet. Now, we could not be more proud of the work that you are doing. More and more, developers are transforming, empowering, and reimagining the very important things that we do in our daily lives. And we've made a video about your incredible impact and just how far you've come in such a short period of time. And I'd love to run it for you now. Eight years ago, when the iPhone was launched, it didn't have an app store. And there was tremendous desire on the part of developers and customers for Apple to let third-party applications be created. We all had this dream that apps were going to become really important, but it took some time to realize how they would affect everything that we care about. And as that cumulative effect appeared, then we all start to realize Oh my goodness, this is bigger than any of us imagined. Apps plus handheld devices. I think that's a watershed moment in civilization. I put it up there with the invention of the microscope and the telescope. Here we live in a time where the most powerful tools ever imagined to investigate and probe our world are in the hand of essentially everyone.
If you think the Industrial Revolution was transformational, the apps was way bigger. I don't think we've seen anything reach a mass adoption at anything close to this pace. It took, for example, electricity uh, over 100 years to get to its first 50 million users. It took television 13 years, and the App Store got to 50 million users in only 17 months. The thing the App Store did was give each and every developer a voice. You know, it's a testament that two guys in a room working on an idea can launch an app and instantly have hundreds of millions of people very quickly. The iPhone made photography universally accessible. I cannot think of a single industry that doesn't need an app. People want data at their fingertips. They want personalized experiences. They want power over their money. And it's not just for banking, it's for every industry. The App Store has fundamentally shifted how we all need to deliver. It's leveling the playing field. We don't have to own things. We don't have to own our own cars. We don't have to own our own music. We can call it up when we need it. That's a big change, all flowing from the idea of not just convenience, but people building up an infrastructure around that. We're now talking not about hundreds of people getting the benefits of an idea, but millions. If you had told me when I was a kid that you would be able to write an idea and then film that idea and then distribute it to the world, on a device that you could also put in your pocket. I would never have stopped laughing, and I would have thought you were insane. The App Store gives everyone access to incredibly powerful tools, and there's an incredible generation of filmmakers and storytellers to come. Kids love technology and they love interacting with the iPad and with apps. That wonder and awe that gets ignited is actually being utilized to help that person learn. Certainly in education, there's so much potential to take the classroom with you anywhere. We all know we're in this magic moment. There are so many incredible apps, and they do things for people that change their lives. Music, for me, it's like everything. It's really special. This amazing feeling that music gives me, I want everyone to have that. Even the person cannot hear. So, the idea of the app is to introduce music for deaf people. I'm going to put this in your wrist. So, if you play, you can feel the vibrations. Yeah. Did you feel that, Rob? That's so cool. Okay. <laughs> My dream is to bring music to everyone. It is an amazing time to be a developer. We're still just at the beginning of all this. This moment where the technology of an iPhone and an iPad and the watch enable so many incredible things. There's so much that can still change and evolve due to the power of applications.
On behalf of everyone at Apple, we want to thank the developer community for everything that you've done. Thank you. You have changed so many parts of all of our lives and transformed the world in the process. Now, we want to talk about now the next opportunity to transform the world. And that's the opportunity to bring native apps to the watch with a new version of watchOS. For us, this is a giant moment. This is how we felt when we launched the App Store, opening a new platform to developers to create new applications that can really change people's lives. We really believe deeply in this space. We believe in technology designed for the wrist. And we believe by opening up the platform that you will create new and powerful uses that today we can only begin to imagine. We began making the Apple Watch available just six weeks ago. And it's pretty amazing that today we're already talking about the next version of the Watch OS. This new version will have great new capabilities and it will bring native apps right to your wrist. To tell you all about it, I'd like to invite up my friend and colleague, Kevin Lynch. Kevin? Hi. So we're moving really fast on Watch OS, and I'm super excited to talk with you about the enhancements that are coming in Watch OS, as well as the powerful new abilities for app development. Let's start with the enhancements. The enhancements include great new timepiece functions, improvements in communication as well as in health and fitness, and support for the new capabilities in Apple Pay and Maps and Siri. Let's start with timepiece. Now already Apple Watch is a, is a really great timepiece, most customizable one in the world, and a lot of that is due to the watch faces and how you can change them. Well, we're adding some new watch faces in watchOS 2. That includes a beautiful new photos face to be able to select any photo that you have and create a watch face out of it. You can make more than one, of course, and switch between them as you like. Or you can select a photo album, and every time you raise your wrist, you'll see a different photo from your album show up. It's a great way of seeing your photos throughout the day. Now, we went a little further with this, and we shot some photos ourselves. We did some time-lapse photography in some beautiful locations around the world. And the way this works is when you raise your wrist, you'll see this 24-hour shoot that we've done in different locations, and it will be your current time there. So if it's noon, you'll see noon in London. If it's at night, you'll see Big Ben all lit up. And we've done this not only for London, but some other locations too. You can choose from Hong Kong, Mac Lake, which is a beautiful place in the Sierras, as well as New York and Shanghai and London. So a great way of seeing some really beautiful imagery, both your own and these time-lapse images on your wrist. Now you can customize your watch with these images, but you can also choose to show the information that you like on your watch face with something in traditional watch terms is called complications. Now with watchOS 2, we're really excited to enable app developers to make your own complications. So you'll be able to do things like show your flight time from United, see the state of your home control system, look at the charge level of your electric car, or see sports scores, for example, from the MLB app. You can choose the information that you most like to see right on your watch face. It's going to be really, really cool. And this will work not only on the modular face, but across the others that support complications as well. You'll be able to choose from a variety of templates, and we'll make those look beautiful in each of the different watch faces. So it's going to be a really fast way to look at this information. Now, we went further than this. We thought it's really great to be able to see the current information. But what about future information, like the weather later today or your meeting after the, after the, after the current one? And what if you could go forward in time and actually see that information update on your watch face? Well, we're supporting that in watchOS 2 with something that we call time travel. And you'll be able to rotate your digital crown, and you can go both forward and backward through time, and the information will update right on your screen. Let's take a look here. So I've got uh, my, my meeting in the middle there, and weather, and the charge level of a car, and time in London. 
when I rotate the crown, you can see it's changing the time and it's showing me things that are coming up. Now we know that a really popular one here might be the stocks complication, but we haven't cracked that one yet. Um, <laughs> we're working on it. You can keep rotating and keep going forward. You can get all the way to tonight. I can see I've, I've got a date night tonight and the weather's gonna be good and time in London will be 2 a.m. So you can see all the information that you like to see in the time that you want to look at. Really, really fun way to interact with time on your watch. <laughs> That's time travel. Now we also thought, what would be a great experience for the watch when it's on your nightstand and charging? Well, we've come up with a new user interface for this in watchOS 2 called nightstand mode. So when you put your watch on its side and it's charging, you get this beautiful display now of the time. And of course, you can set an alarm that will wake you up in the morning, and it will go something like this. So a beautiful little al bedside alarm clock now with Apple Watch. And the buttons on the side and the crown act as your snooze and your off button. Uh, so a really fun way to have a, have a nightstand view on your watch. So those are just some of the great new timepiece functions that are coming in watchOS 2. Let's look at communication. Now already Apple Watch is great at communicating with your friends. You can just press the side button and see your, your 12 friends that you've selected. Now we realize that some of you have more than 12 friends. Uh, so now in watchOS 2 you can actually have different sets of friends you can select. And you can add a friend right from your watch by pressing the plus sign and add a friend right there. Isn't that cool? Now when you're communicating with someone, you could make a phone call or send a message or send a drawing with digital touch. And now in watchOS 2, you'll be able to use multiple colors in your drawings. So you can draw a beautiful flower that has more than just one color. Even my drawings are starting to look better now uh, with this. Also in email, you can already read email on your watch. With watchOS 2, you'll be able to reply to email. And with the phone, you can already take phone calls in your watch. We're now going to support FaceTime audio, so you'll get really high fidelity calls right in your wrist. And with health and fitness, already Apple Watch is a great partner for health and fitness. With watchOS 2, we're enabling your favorite fitness apps to run natively on the watch, so you can use them wherever you are, and your workouts with these apps will contribute directly to your all-day activity should be really great. So if you go on a bike ride, it will count. <laughs> We're also enabling Siri to start workouts. So you can just raise your wrist and say, hey Siri, start a 30 minute run in the park, and it will start the workout app and get it going for you. You can also do things like say, go for a 300 calorie bike ride, or go for a five mile run, and it will just start the workout without you having to touch the watch at all. And when you achieve something, there's some beautiful new achievements that you'll see that look like this. They spin right in, they're beautiful, you can play with them in 3D on your watch, and they're engraved on the back now with your name. Uh, and you can share these with people over messages or face Facebook or Twitter. Really cool health and fitness. <laughs> with Apple Pay, uh, you saw some of the great new support we're bringing for store cards and rewards cards. We're supporting that in the watch. So you can select a store card and use it right in your watch at a merchant terminal just by waving it in front of the, the store stand there. And then with a wallet coming to watch, all of your rewards cards will be right there. And you can also use those right from your watch as you're doing purchases. With transit, we're supporting, of course, the mass transit capabilities and maps now. So you'll be able to see the transit lines on your wrist. You can actually see the departure times for different stations you're near. And when you're navigating, you'll get step-by-step -step directions about getting through the different mass transit that you use. With Siri, we're continuing to add new domains for Siri. In watchOS 2, we're enabling Siri to get you mass transit directions, like bus directions to the ferry building, which will look like this, and you can just start navigating. Uh, or you can control things in your home with Siri. So you can say things like, hey Siri, set the dinner scene, and it will talk to any HomeKit-enabled devices in your house and set the lights just how you want them. Is that cool? It's gonna be great. Another great thing is you can actually ask for any of the glances you have. So you can say, hey Siri, show me the Instagram glance, and it will show up right in your watch face. And this could be a glance you don't even have currently selected. It's a great way to show information from third-party apps right there in Siri. So those are just some of the highlights of what's coming in watchOS 2. We think it's gonna be a really, really great update to the watch. Now that's not all. 
We also, of course, focused on what we can do for developers. And already, uh, out of the gate on day one, you could build apps for Apple Watch using something called WatchKit. And that has enabled over uh, many thousands of apps now to be created for Apple Watch. And these apps today function by relying on your phone. So you might have, for example, an app on your watch, and the user interface runs on your phone, and the user interface is on your watch, but all the logic for your app today runs on your phone. Well, with native apps, you'll be able to actually move that logic to the watch, so both the UI and the logic are there, all run locally, performance will be great, responsiveness will be great. It's gonna be a great new frontier for apps on Apple Watch with native app support. And when you're actually wandering away from your phone sometimes, your apps will be able to communicate directly with the network, with known Wi-Fi networks, so you can get the information you want wherever you are with your watch. So we heard from you as we were working on native apps, a lot of feature requests of things you'd like to do on the watch. These are a bunch of the things that we've heard. Uh, so we've been listening to that, and let's go through some of the things that will be possible now in watchOS 2. You can see how we did on this. So one of the things we heard was really want to access the microphone on the watch. So yes, in watchOS 2, you can access the microphone right on the watch and bring that audio right into your app. We also heard you want to play audio out of the speaker. You can do that. WatchOS 2 with native apps, you can play back through the watch speaker, or you can play audio to a Bluetooth headset or speaker connected, both short form and long form audio. Video, we know you want to play video. You can play back short form video right on the watch face. It looks beautiful on the watch display. Access to health kit, we've definitely heard that. You now will have access, native health kit on the watch, including streaming heart rate data. So if you're doing, for example, a bike ride with Strava, you can see what heart rate zone you're in while you're biking. <laughs> HomeKit is natively on the watch, so you'll be able to actually talk to your HomeKit devices from your watch and control them. We think this is gonna be a great future for control right from your wrist. You'll be able to access the accelerometer so you can get movement data. So for example, from the Ping Golf app here, you can check out your golf swing uh, tempo as you're swinging the, the golf club with your watch on. Taptic Engine is one of the things that we've really done a lot of focused work on to make it a great experience on the wrist. And we are bringing access to the Taptic Engine to you for your app development. So you'll be able to choose from a range of different feelings as well as audio that will come out the speaker. So for example, if I'm unlocking my car here, I'll get feedback on my wrist, both audio and, and felt, just like that. Another great interaction on the watch is using the digital crown to manipulate the UI. And we're enabling access to digital crown as well with watchOS 2. So you'll be able to control a custom UI element like changing the temperature here just by rotating the crown like this. Super easy way to interact with your watch. So we've done a great job bringing a lot of access to the watch now with native apps. And I'd like to show you a demo now of some examples. So I've got a watch here, and um, I'm just gonna put it on. And it's connected to the display here through this little cable. All right. So let's start by looking at um, three examples of new features in watchOS 2, and then I'll show you three apps. Let's start with uh, making a photo face. So I'll just press my digital crown here, go to the home screen, and there's my photos. And you can see I've got a bunch of photos on here. I can zoom in with the crown and pan around and I can pick a photo that might make a nice watch face like that one. But I want to zoom in and crop it a little more, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more and move it over like that to get it just right. I think that's gonna make a great watch face. So I just force touch, choose create watch face, and there you go, a beautiful new watch face. <laughs> Let's look at time travel. I'll go over to my modular face, I've got some more information here. So I've got flight times here on United, you can see the temperature, my VW car's charge level, and time in London. So I just rotate the crown here, and I can go forward in time. You can see time's updating. Now my flight's leaving, you can see at 1.45, and I wonder if my charge level will be enough to get to the airport. So if I just keep going forward in time here, we'll get to 1.45, and you can see my charge level is just gonna be great to get to the airport. And in fact, you can keep going and look at boarding time and arrival time for your flight. So you can get a great preview of your day just by rotating the crown right on the watch face. It's a lot of fun. Just press the crown and go back to home. Now, if you get an email, you can reply to email now in watchOS 2. 
So here's, a, here's an email that's just come in from Mark. Now I can reply to this by pressing the button right below the message, or you can use Siri to reply to a message right from a notification. So if I just use Siri here, I can reply like this. Reply, I would love to. So Siri's uh, making the message there. It's created a response. I just press send, and it now goes off to Mark. So just by pressing the crown, you can use Siri to send a message right from your wrist. Now let's look at a few third-party apps. So let's look at the VW app you saw in slides a second ago. And I'll show you how that works. Here it is. Now I can lock my car just by pressing this, this control right here. Responds right away. You can see the app also open very quickly. And I can control the temperature here that we were looking at before. By just rotating the crown, you can see how responsive it is as I go up and down through temperatures here. Really, really cool. I'll get it nice and warm for me, so when I go down there, it'll be nice and toasty. Okay, turn it on. All right, I've got confirmation that it actually enabled that on my car now. Now, access to the mic is gonna be really helpful in apps, and some of the apps that will really benefit are communication apps, like WeChat. A lot of messages sent uh, via WeChat are actually audio messages. So let's see how that'll work now with watchOS 2. See, I've got some messages here. There's one from Becky. And I can reply here just by pressing the reply button. And you can see I've got a microphone now, so I can do an audio response. Let's do that. That sounds great. So you can see as I was recording it, it got the audio levels of my voice. And now it sent that to Becky. I can also reply with stickers here. There's different categories of them. And with the digital crown now, being able to connect to your UI, I can just flip through recent uh, stickers and pick one quickly that I like and then just send that one as well. So very fast to interact now uh, with all these new controls you have available in watchOS 2. Now let's look at the Vine glance. Uh, Vine is a great example of playing back video on the watch and uh, its format is really perfect for the watch face. So here's a recent one on Vine. So that's video playing back right on the watch face. So those are just some examples of what you could do now with watchOS 2, and I'm super excited to see what all of you guys do with all this stuff. So some great new enhancements coming, as well as some super powerful app development tools for you. And we've been working really hard on this, and I'm really happy to say that this stuff is all available to you today to start building these native apps. Just six weeks from our launch. It's unbelievable. And then it'll be available in the fall to everyone. And we'll work across all the watches, of course. And it will be free. So this has been a great adventure. We're just getting started here. And I'm really looking forward to the journey ahead with all of you on Apple Watch. Thank you very much. Back to Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Kevin. We're really excited to have Apple Watch out in the world, and we can't wait to see what you do with the Watch OS. And we couldn't be more excited about how developers and users will use this powerful ecosystem of both products and platforms. Three amazing platforms. The opportunities really are limitless. Now, before we close this morning, We do have one more thing. I'd like to tell you about something that we've been working really hard on and something we are super excited about. You know, we love music. And music is such an important part of our lives and our culture. We've had a long relationship with music at Apple, and music has had a very rich history of change, some of which we played a part in. We've made a great video about the history of music, and I'd like to play it for you this morning.
Today we're announcing Apple Music, the next chapter in music, and I know you are going to love it. It will change the way that you experience music forever. To tell you more about it, I'd like to bring up someone who knows more about music and the music experience than anyone I know. He's worked with amazing artists, from Bruce Springsteen to John Lennon and countless others. We are thrilled to have him a part of the Apple team. Please join me in welcoming Jimmy Iovine. Jimmy. Thanks, Tim. Wow, it's really an honor to be here. I'm here because in 2003, the record industry was a ball of confusion. We had Napster, we had LimeWire, we had BitTorrent, this giant invader from the north, technology. I'm looking at my guys saying, well, what do we do with this? So I go up to Apple and I see Steve Jobs and Eddie Q, and they show me something brilliant and groundbreaking, a simple, elegant way to buy music online, iTunes. I'm like, wow, the ads are real. These guys really do think different. So <laughs> they could help move culture the same way that art moves culture. Technology and art can work together, at least at Apple. So now, 2015, music, music industry is a fragmented mess. If you want to stream music, you can go over here. If you want to stream some video, you can check some of these places out. If you want to follow some artist, there's more confusion for that. So, so I reached out to Tim Cook and Eddie Q, and I said, guys, can we build a bigger and better ecosystem with the elegance and simplicity that only Apple can do? One complete thought around music. And from that, I'm standing here today so proud of everyone that's worked so hard. And I'm going to introduce you to Apple Music. Music has such power in our lives. The way we listen to and experience music is undergoing a profound change these days. To have access to nearly all the music in the world at our fingertips and in our pockets is remarkable. And yet, there needs to be a place where music can be treated less like digital bits and more like the art it is, with a sense of respect and discovery. And if that place could actually accommodate and support the artists who make the music, not just the top tier artists, but the kids in their bedrooms too. Provide them all with a home and a way to engage with their audiences. That would be pretty great. And that's what we set out to do with Apple Music. On Apple Music, all the ways you love music can now live together. Stream from the millions of songs on iTunes, anytime and on demand. Along with hand-picked playlists, recommendations, and all that's great and breaking in music right now. And broadcasting every day is Apple's first 24-7 worldwide radio station. Live in over 100 countries, Beats One is anchored by Zane Lowe in LA. Beats One, worldwide, always on. Ebro Darden in New York. New York City, worldwide, this is Beats One. And me, Julie Adenuga, out of London. I cannot wait to play you guys some music we've got lined up. Some world And at the heart of Apple Music, there's Connect where artists can share with fans like never before. Songs, remixes, demos, mixtapes, photos, videos, lyrics, sound bites. Really, any way an artist chooses to express themselves. For fans, we tried to create a complete experience. By combining the catalog of the world's music with the music that's not in that catalog yet, direct from the artist to you, and the shared experience of Beats One. For artists, We've built an ecosystem we hope can start to provide the tools to grow, nurture, and sustain careers. One place, one complete thought around music. Thank you. 
and Matt Sapper Music, and the great Trent Reznor. It's all the ways you love music, all in one place. And that place is almost in a billion hands around the world already. One app, one single app on your iPhone. Apple Music is three things. It's a revolutionary music service. Oh. <laughs> a revolutionary music service curated by the leaning music experts who we, uh, we helped handpick. These people are going to help you with the most difficult question in music. When you're listening to a playlist, what song comes next? The only song that's as important as the one you're listening to at that moment is the one that follows it. Now, picture this. You're in a special moment. You're exercising or some other special moment. <laughs> right, Trey? He exercises a lot. And your heart's pumping. And you're about to turn up the reps. And the next song comes on. And buzz kill. Now, you may ask why that happened. It happened because it was probably programmed by an algorithm alone. Algorithms alone can't do that emotional task. You need a human touch. And that's why at Apple Music, we're going to give you the right song, the right playlist, at the right moment, all on demand. Now, the first ever live 24-hour worldwide radio station. So Trent Reznor <laughs> calls me up and says, I got it. This is what we're going to do. Let's build the first ever worldwide live radio station broadcast from three cities that plays music not based on research, not based on genre, not based on drum beats, only music that is great and feels great. A station that has only one master, music itself. So I said, why do artists always have the greatest ideas that are practically impossible to execute? So I said, but wait a second. That's why we're at Apple. We're at Apple to help artists' dreams be realized. So we built the station. And it's a music lover's dream. If you love great music without any restrictions, you're going to love Apple Music's Beats 1. Finally, Connect, a fantastic way for established and new and even unsigned artists to connect directly with music lovers anywhere. This is going to be very powerful for musicians. Can you imagine being an up-and-coming artist and being able to share your music on the biggest music platform in the world that people already have, Apple Music? Remember, this is an ecosystem. It's built to fit together. It feeds off each other. When you upload your music to Apple Music, anything can happen. So now let me leave that real heavy lifting to my great friend, Eddie Q, and tell you how this all works together. Thanks, Thanks, baby. Thank you, Jimmy. It's great to be here this morning with you. So Apple Music, it's a revolutionary music service, and it starts with my music. We've added some great new features from iTunes, like the Up Next queue, and also your recently added albums and songs right across the top, and all of the music you've purchased, along with the playlists you've created on your Mac or your iPhone, are right here. Now, of course, you can search your music library, but now you can search and stream the millions and millions of songs that we have on iTunes. Now, in addition to my music, when you can stream and listen to any song you want, you need a great place to start. And that's why we've created For You. For You recommends playlists and albums that we think you're going to love. They're personalized to your taste based on the music you listen to the artists you love. And it isn't just algorithms. It's recommendations made by real people who love music, and they're our team of experts. Now let's take a look at new. Here you'll discover new artists and albums every week. 
along with the top charts, and every one of our playlists, all human curated, available by genre or by activity. So when you think of Apple Music, it's my music for you and new. It makes it fun and easy to experience the catalog of the world's music. And that is the revolutionary music service. Now let's talk about radio. The truth is, internet radio isn't really radio. It's just a playlist of songs. And so we wanted to do something really big. We wanted to create a worldwide live radio station broadcasting around the globe. And we've done that with Beats One. It's the world's best radio station now needs the world's best voice. And that's why we've hired Zane Lowe. Zane is a masterful interviewer and an influential music figure in his own right. And to tell you more about it, here is Zane. I'm a music fan. I play records. What I love is watching a group of people react to a great record for the first time. When I play that record on the radio, the audience tell me, the timelines light up, my friends tell me, my phone lights up. They love it or they hate it, but it creates a debate. That's what good music on the radio does. When Apple first asked me to be involved in this, they told us to put the great music in front of the average, the unexpected, the undiscovered, the anticipated, the underrated. Their words move the needle, and that's what we're doing. We have real music fans running this place. We have great music DJs and incredible artists who are in the studio right now building real radio shows that are going to blow your mind at the only place that can pull off an imaginative idea as big as this, Apple. We're called Beats One. We're always on playing the music that we love. So. Beats One, it's worldwide, it is live, it is broadcasting 24 by 7, and it is coming from New York, LA, and London. And that is radio. Next, we wanted to find a way to bring fans closer to the artists they love, and we call it Connect. Now, it's a place where artists are free to upload their music, their videos, their photos, all directly to a fan. Let's take Pharrell, a favorite musician and songwriter of mine. Now he's prolific and he does a lot. And let me show you how it works with Connect. He takes a lot of photos, he writes a lot of lyrics, he's experimenting and mixing songs all the time. Or he just has something new and interesting to say. Well, all of this lives right in Connect. Artists can post and publish and upload anything, including directly to Facebook, Twitter, and their own website. And fans can like and comment on those posts. And it's not just for one artist, but it's for all of the artists that you love. And to give you a little sense of what it's like to be an artist on Connect, I'd like to invite up a friend, Drake. I want to say, honestly, um, what an honor it is to be in this room with so many individuals that have changed the way in which the world relates to technology. So give yourself a, a round of applause, please. For example, um, I bought this uh, vintage Apple employees jacket using a uh, tool known in the rap world as the internet. It's going to be huge this year. It's out of this world. He's excited. He knows about it, that guy right there. <laughs> no, um, honestly, in all seriousness, I came here today to share my story about the way technology changed what I do for a living. Um, I'm from Toronto, Canada. <laughs> um, and, you know, as a kid growing up, I always wondered if my city or even my country would have somebody break into the global music scene as a, as a true superstar. You know, the dream seemed unattainable at the time. Um, I mean, even myself, I tried to do it the traditional way, you know, the, the towering New York label buildings, the lobby, 
littered with other people's accomplishments. Um, it's, it's improbable to think that every talented artist is gonna get a shot to have their vision validated. And then, that's when the game changed. And we had to change it. Myself and my team brought our vision and our music directly to the people. Um, and that was kind of the, the, the first time that, that we really got, got noticed. The, the dream of being a new artist like myself five years ago and connecting directly with an audience has never been more close and reachable than right now. See, now we encourage you to spend the time on, on your body of work. Uh, spend the time on your craft. Assemble, assemble the right body of work. And instead of having to post your stuff on all these different and sometimes confusing places, it all lives in one very simple, very easy place, and that is connect. It's right from where you are, in your city, in front of your computer. And this approach is how we broke in 2008, and it has been perfected and simplified, of course, by the great people at Apple. So, you know, as I'm working tirelessly on this next album, this comes at the perfect time for me. Given the uh, great success of my, my last mixtape that went directly to iTunes, this really, um, I, 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 I can't wait to incorporate Apple Music and especially Connect into what I'm doing next. I'm really excited about what I'm working on. And as an artist, I can say, for all those kids sitting at home, it's truly amazing to be party, part of something that I believe in. And um, this is something that, that simplifies everything for the modern, modern musician like myself and the modern music consumer like you. So I hope you enjoy Apple Music. I hope you enjoy Connect. My name is Drake, and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Drake. And that is Connect. Now, I'd love to give you a demo of Apple Music, but before I start, I do want to wish Phil Schiller a happy birthday. Oh. So let's go ahead and launch our new music app. You'll notice right away it's got a brand new UI, much simpler to use. Your recently added albums and songs right across the top. Let's play this, this new song from Spoon I added. One of the things you'll notice, we have a new mini player across the bottom that always shows you what's playing. And if I tap on it, I get full screen and I can see the beautiful artwork, all the playback controls. I can just swipe down and it disappears. Now, I like looking at my music by artists. It's really easy to do that too. I'll just tap on albums, switch to artists, and let's take a look at Aretha Franklin. First thing you'll notice is we add beautiful artwork to all the artist pages. Notice as I swipe up, it goes away, and you see Aretha at the top. Now, no demo goes complete without playing this song. Now, you not only get all of your Aretha Franklin songs in your music library, but you can also tap on all, and now you can see all of the songs on Apple Music, including the latest release, what the top song is, what the top album is. Now, it is hard to stop this song, but I want to keep going. <laughs> now, let's go back to my library, and let's take a look at my playlist. Now, despite the game last night, I'm getting ready for tomorrow night, and I've already started creating my playlist. One of the first things you'll notice is we can add your own artwork to your playlist. And I'm gonna be doing this tonight, getting this Warriors ready. But let's go back, it is karaoke night. And uh, these are some of the songs that uh, our team has uh, to look forward to tonight. Let's go ahead and play that. Just imagine. Now if I tap on the mini player, I can see 
The full screen, if I tap on the right hand side next to the playback controls, I can see the complete playlist and it's very easy for me to reorganize it. Let's say I want to move Jealous back up and now that'll be the next song that plays. It's that simple. Now that's great. The first time we go to For You, we want to find out a little bit about your musical taste. And so we're going to ask you what genres you like. I'm a big fan of rock, pop, hip hop, and alternative. And uh, now it'll ask me for some of the uh, artists that I like. Well, I love Bruce Springsteen, so I'm going to tap twice. I like Lord, like Alabama Shakes. And now we're going to take all of this information you provided along with all of your playlist and the songs that you purchased on iTunes, and we're going to make recommendations just for you. So here's one inspired by Bruce Springsteen. Here's one called Bring, Bring the Big Rock. Let's, let's play that. That's a great Foo Fighters song. I can just tap and see the rest of the songs. Definitely going to like this playlist. Now here's another one from Pharrell. And I also get new albums that are available to me and even some classic albums that I should be listening to. And so here are some brand new albums from the artists that I really love. Now here's an interesting one. Cuban, a Cuban playlist. You might be wondering, how did that get in there? Well, I like a lot of Latin music. And so Apple Music knows that and it's recommending this playlist to me. Let's take a look at it. Definitely gets my Cuban blood going. Now this is a playlist I definitely want to keep. So I'm going to tap on the plus sign, and I've added that now to my playlist. Now let's take a look at what's new. You can see new albums across the top. More here, and even the hot singles that are out. Let's play this one from Florence and the Machine. I can keep scrolling and see some recent releases. But of course, everyone loves the charts. So let's go ahead and take a, see, take a look at the charts. See the top songs, the top albums, and even the top music videos. We have tens of thousands of music videos in HD, all ad-free. Let's take a look at this one from Mark Ronson. I gotta work on some of those moves for next year. <laughs> now sometimes you just wanna sit back and let someone else be your DJ. And so let's go to radio. And to give you a little taste of what Beats One is gonna sound like. Beats One. We welcome our special guest Florence from Florence and the Machine. On paper it sounds like super, not how you think like a rock and roll album would be made. Wasn't it you and your sweatpants? It was me and an anorak cycling to the studio. Beats One. We're looking for the most exciting music and the people that love it in all corners of the globe. Broadcasting to 100 countries, that shared experience just got so much bigger. Well, That's really awesome. Now let's take a look at Connect and see what some of my favorite artists are up to. So here's Pharrell with some behind the scenes footage. Here's Chris Cornell. This is an interesting one. He's actually posted lyrics of a new song that's coming out before, obviously, he's even recorded it. Uh, here's Bastille. They're, they're working on their next album. Let's see what they have to say. Mark is just through here, and we're working on a song called Blame, which some of you might have heard um, at festivals or gigs before. But um, we're really excited to have finally recorded it. It's a song about gangsters. Um, and yeah, this is the riff, which we, we're really happy with it. We think it's sounding great. Thank you. 
It's great to be able to get behind the scenes and see what the process that an artist uses to create a song. As we keep going down, here's a, a shot from Alabama Shakes a couple nights ago. And here's a studio session, actually a Capitol Studio A. For those of you that know, Capitol Studio is one of the premier studios and historical, and uh, Alabama Shakes was just there a couple nights ago. Again, be able to see things you've never been able to hear or see. Uh, Lauren Kramer, you've probably never heard of him. He's an unsigned artist. I just started following him. He's actually posted a new song right up on Connect, and I'd love to play it now. It's the first time anyone's heard it. Just imagine you're a new artist and look at all the people you've been able to, able to hear this song right now thanks to Connect. Don't go saying it's gone. Don't go saying you're done. So Lauren Kramer, remember that name. We think he's going to be really, really huge. Now, of course, you can always search for music across all of our millions and millions of songs, but I like to do a little bit of stuff with Siri, because Siri's been learning a lot more about music. Play Born to Run. one of my favorite songs of all time, but let's get a little more specific. Play the top 10 songs in alternative. And if I tap on the up next cue, I can see all of the top 10 songs and what's next. Now, I feel like reminiscing a little. And let's go back to my high school days when I graduated. Play the top song from May 1982. <laughs> Now, that brings back some memories, but we'll leave that for another time. <laughs> now, have you ever gone to a movie and you love the soundtrack or the song that was on there, but you don't know the name or you've forgotten about it later? Well, it's really easy with Siri. Play the song from Selma. Let's do that again. Play the song from Selma. One day when the glory comes, it will be ours. It will be ours. Oh, one day when the war is won. And that is Siri, and that is Apple Music. It is a revolutionary music service with recommendations just for you, a worldwide live radio station with the world's best DJs, an exciting way for fans to connect with artists, and of course, this is joined by the iTunes Music Store, the best place to buy music. Apple Music is all of the ways you love music, all in one place. And we're launching in over 100 countries later this month with iOS 8.4 for your iPhone, iPod Touch and iPad, as well as a new version of iTunes for the Mac, a new version of iTunes for Windows, and Android is coming this fall. Now, Apple Music will be just $9.99 a month, the cost of an album. 
and we want everyone to try it, and so we're making the first three months free. Now, we want to do something really great for families. Today, you have to buy a music subscription for each and every person. Or you share an account, even though you're not supposed to, and now all of you can't play at the same time, and your playlists and recommendations get all messed up. Well, with Apple Music, for just $14.99, you can have up to six family members. Everyone. Everyone gets their own account, their own library, their own recommendations. It's an incredible value. And that is Apple Music. Thank you. Turn it back to Tim. Thanks, Eddie. Isn't that amazing? We really love Apple Music, and we hope that you do too. And we're so excited about it, and with all the countries we're rolling out to, we made a great ad to tell the world about it. And I'd love to run it for you now. This is Zane Lowell Beats One. We got the whole world locked in for this one. Brand new Pharrell. Down we go. You care what they see. You care what they know. Music connects with us all except at a deep emotional level. We couldn't be happier to launch Apple Music. And we can't wait till you start listening to it at the end of the month. This has been a jam-packed morning. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. We want to thank everybody for joining us, especially the developers. And I'd like to recognize all of the people in Apple, all of our team that have worked so hard on making and creating all of these products you've seen this morning. Thank you, guys. It, it is an incredible privilege of a lifetime to work with them. Now, I've got one last thing. Before we go, it's only fitting to celebrate the launch of Apple Music with an incredible music performance by the, one of the hottest new artists in music today. And it's not only a hot new artist, but he's going to do a worldwide premiere of his newest song this morning. Please give it up for the weekend.
weekend. <laughs> Everybody have a great week. It's great to be together.